Hey guys and welcome back. Today we're looking at the man himself, Yodra Hamma, and here's a snippet of what's to come. The Vitruvian Man, a foremost work of arts, science and everything in between, is a 15th century drawing made with pen and ink. This masterpiece was created by the most famous Renaissance man, Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci was an artist and a dedicated scientist with a curious and brilliant intelligence. He was fascinated by the laws of science and nature and studied them in detail, which are portrayed in his creations, with his work having influenced countless souls from various fields. Intended to explore the idea of proportion, this piece of part work of art and part mathematical diagram explores the human body, namely the geometry of perfect proportions, which appealed to Leonardo's interest in anatomy and inspired his drawing. But there has been speculation as to who he based this drawing off. Was it a fictional character, a figure of his dreams, a premonition of an unborn man, or even a live drawing of someone he had the fortune to encounter? Welcome back to the channel everyone, my name is Dr. Maddie and I'm your anime doctor from the UK. Today we're going to be looking at the biggest menace in anime as well as winner of the Worst Father of the Year award for the past 20 years. That's right, Yoshiro Hanma. <laughs> We're going to be looking at some of his ridiculous feats of strength, trying to understand them and rationalise them as best as we can. We're also going to be taking a look at his physique and comparing it to Leonardo da Vinci's golden ratio to help determine if he has the most beautiful of physiques. Beautiful. We're also going to spend some focused time looking at his demon back and I'll be establishing whether or not it's actually anatomically possible regardless of whether you can train to develop it. And just to give you a general update about the channel, I put out a poll as to what you'd like to see when I celebrate passing 75,000 subscribers and of course you voted for me to do an anime opener in the fashion of Baldi the Grappler. And it looks like I'm going to have to start making that video relatively soon, so why not subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on that one. Otherwise, let's begin. So yes, to start off with, we're going to need to get a bit of a backstory about Yojiro. He was born at three months old, and that's completely unheard of for a normal human being. At three months or 12 weeks, the human fetus measures about two to three inches, which is unfortunately incompatible for life. But no, not Yojiro. Not only was he strong enough to survive, he was also strong enough to take life, as it's shown in the manga. And we also see at this age that he's actually strong enough to injure his mother when he's breastfeeding. He needs some milk! And so you can see that Yojiro's history of abusing women started at a very young age. Who knows how many women are on his list? So I think we can quite confidently say that at three months he's demonstrating the skills far beyond that of a one-year-old child. So, so far I think we can call him the world's strongest baby. <laughs> We then have a time skip and catch up with Yojiro at the age of 16 when he goes to fight in the Vietnam War, which is clearly what all other teenagers get up to in their spare time. He's described as being similar to a comic book superhero, taking on fully armoured platoons just with his bare hands. I could do this all day. And apparently he's able to live underground or underwater for up to a month and he's able to bend guns as if they're toys. Now, I'm not sure whether this is humanly possible, but the odds are in Yojiro's favour. If we have a look at Mark Felix, who's quoted as having the world's strongest hands, we can see how easily he bends frying pans. Now, I can imagine it's far harder to bend a gun rather than a frying pan, so I think we can give this one to Yojiro in stating that he, in fact, has the world's strongest hands. No, <laughs> Stopping an earthquake with a punch. I'm sorry, but that's... Yes! But for argument's sake, let's have a look at this earthquake. So it's strong enough to be able to be felt by the people on the ground and cause some localised damage. 
And if we were to compare this to a description on a Richter scale, this would sit around a 4 to 5, which would equate to anywhere between 60,000 to 20 million kilos of TNT, which is at least as much as a fission bomb. Now, considering that the world's hardest recorded punch is up to 1,200 kilos, I think we can safely say that Yojiro has the world's hardest punch. <laughs> <laughs> so his kicks are so incredibly strong that he's kicked Barky's memory back to when he was in the womb. And this obviously isn't possible because we can't retain information that early on in life in what's so-called infant amnesia. In fact, the topic of memory has been studied extensively to the point where they've actually formed what's called a forgetting curve. This was put together by a German psychologist and it shows the rapid decline in our ability to recall things after we've learnt them. Surprisingly, if left alone, our brain forgets up to 50% of things that we've learnt within an hour. Yeah. And by day 30, we've possibly retained between 2 to 3%. <laughs> so, giving some context here, this is Hanayama, who's known for his vice grip strength. In fact, in later seasons, we see Hanayama ripping flesh off of Speck using the very same technique, whereas in this scene, Yojiro is just shrugging it off, just showing how awesome the strength of his forearms are. <laughs> Ah, yes, the much debated arrow catch. So what's happening here is that he's shooting a titanium arrow which takes 200 kilos of force just to retract and he's shooting it at point blank range. Oh yeah, and this shish kebabed an elk the last time it was shot. Run. Now, factoring in all this information into a speed calculator, the arrow would be travelling at a speed of up to 240 miles an hour when it was released from the bow. So for Yojiro to have caught this, he would need to have been travelling at a third of the speed of sound, which is clearly the fastest reflexes in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so, they're basically crushing a concrete wall. And whereas it takes Retsu several punches, with Yoshiro it just takes one tenth of his hand. And just to put this into perspective, it normally takes several minutes using a demolition drill to knock down a concrete wall. And a demolition drill is capable of delivering up to 2,000 blows per minute at a rate of £45 per impact. So for argument's sake, let's say it takes up to five minutes to knock down this wall using a demolition drill. That would mean a total of 450,000 pounds of force being applied to the concrete wall. And Yojiro is delivering this in one second. That's like getting smacked up to 170 times by the world's strongest punch. <laughs> What an embarrassing way to go. And again, finger flicking draws strength from your forearm muscles. I don't know what sort of training Yojiro has done to develop such strong forearms. <laughs> Oh god, what a horrific injury. So he's had total transection of his spinal cord. And my guess would be that this guy would actually die from this injury. Not only from the trauma to his spine, but the damage to his internal organs. And in fact, I think I've seen this move being performed later on by Biscuit Oliver in one of the later Barky series. I don't think either of them are going to be reoccurring characters. 
Okay, so those were a few of the feats of strength of Yoshiro Hanma, and clearly part of this is going to be down to his awesome physique, including his demon back. So next up, I'm going to be breaking down the anatomy of the iconic demon back. We're going to have a look at whether this is something you can actually attain, and what exercises you can do to sculpt your own demon back. So firstly, let's break down the facial characteristics of the demon's face. So we've got the eyebrows, the eyes, the nose, the cheekbones, the mouth, and the surrounding cheeks. So let's start off with the eyebrows and let's label up some of the muscles that we have there. So starting off with some of the more familiar muscles, we have things like the deltoids and the trapezius muscles. Now most people have heard of those. These are the muscles used to abduct or lift the shoulder and are therefore commonly involved in throwing maneuvers. <laughs> Now, there's plenty of good exercises to help develop these muscles. Things like upright rows, rear delt flies, or lateral raises are really good moves to get them pumped. And for the traps, for isolated movements, you've got things like weighted shrugs. Next up, let's look at the demon eyes. And really, we can break this down into three main muscles. You've got the infraspinatus and teres minor, which are involved in external rotation of the shoulder and the teres major, involved in movement of the humerus. Now, good exercises to develop eye-popping demon eyes would be things like dumbbell pullovers, cable straight arm pulldowns, or inverted rows if you don't have equipment. Next up, we've got the demon nose that separates out those two eye-popping demon eyes. And this muscle is the rhomboid major, which is a muscle that helps to retract the scapula. So you won't be surprised to hear that the exercises you need to do are designed to retract the scapula. And movements that help to do this are rear delt flies, bent over rows, and scapular retractions if you haven't got any weights. Now next we come to those two big muscles that make up the cheekbones that separate the upper face and the lower part of the face. And I can only assume that these are the latimus dorsi muscles involved in abduction and extension. And in all honesty, the best type of exercise to flex these muscles are things like pull-ups. And if those are too easy, then maybe weighted pull-ups. In my opinion, pull-ups are probably one of the best movements you can be doing to help develop the strength and thickness of your back generally. Now, moving down to the mouth, this was the most confusing part of analysing the anatomy of the demon back, because I, didn't, I hadn't really seen muscles like this. Initially, I thought these muscles were the erecto spinae muscles, but then I thought, how would you be able to attain this six-pack appearance? And so I looked at the different layers of muscles, and I came across the serratus posterior. Now, these are quite deep muscles that help to facilitate breathing, and I'm not really familiar with many exercises you can do to develop them. And maybe this is one of the secrets of the Hummer family, how to develop these serratus posterior muscles. Let me know down below if you know of any exercises that you can do to build them up. And lastly, we have the cheeks that are surrounding the demon mouth, and I think these muscles are the external and internal oblique muscles. These muscles are involved in flexion of the trunk, and I'm sure you guys are quite familiar with exercises that develop these. We're talking about things like sit-ups, planks, and other exercises that focus on ab development. So it looks like the demon back is attainable if you are dedicated enough to stick to an exercise regimen that focuses on developing each and every one of these muscles. Make sure though that your diet is also on point. For more information about the diet, you might want to look at my Baki training video, where we went into this in a bit more detail. Now in this last bit of the video, we're going to be looking at Yoshiro Hanma's general physique in the context of Leonardo da Vinci's idea of perfect proportions. So basically, within this piece of artwork, Leonardo da Vinci wrote what he considered the perfect proportions of a human body, and he based this off of the mathematics of the golden ratio. Now, this golden ratio, also known as the divine proportion, is a special number that appears many times in geometry, art, and architecture. Some artists and architects believe that the golden ratio makes the most beautiful of shapes. And as a result, the ratio can be found in many famous buildings and artworks. So using this golden ratio, we should be able to determine whether Yoshiro Hanma has a perfectly proportioned physique, and if it can be called a beautiful physique. So let's have a look at some of those parameters. So for example, you've got measurements like whether four fingers make up one palm, and measuring from the bottom of the chin to the top of the head, and this should equate to roughly one eighth of his height. Other interesting measurements are looking at the beginning of the genitals, and this should mark out the middle of the man. For some reason, however, in Yojiro, this isn't the case. 
And as you can see, I went through a list of 10 of these, trying to map them up against Yojiro's body. And after mapping out all these parameters onto Yojiro's physique, unfortunately, he only matched for one of them, which means unfortunately, I can't describe Yojiro's physique as being neither perfectly proportionate or beautiful. But what I plan to do is to apply these golden ratio parameters to all of the characters in the Baki series. Hopefully then I can find out who has the closest to a perfectly proportionate and beautiful physique. Let me know down below who you think might measure up. Okay guys, we've covered quite a lot today and I hope you've learned something if not been entertained. Don't forget to leave some recommendations down below about any other aspect of the Bucky series or any other anime show you'd like to see me break down. But in the meantime, why not let one of these two videos keep you entertained. Thanks for watching everyone, watch out for Baldi the Grappler coming soon, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.